I'm getting ready to drill the holes for the anchors, the anchor rods that come up out of the piers. And I went up there and I put my strings back up and I just measured uh, from the strings to the, to the center of the, uh, the rods that are in the, the piers up there and I, and I wrote down the measurements. They're all pretty close to, to what they're supposed to be. They may vary within a sixteenth or so, but I've, I've got my mark on the, the log coming in from the butt of where that the center of that rod is from the string and I did the same thing as I've showed you coming off the, the mark there I made on the, the center line and I got a mark down here and I, I got a mark here now when I start to drill this I can just lay my square on those marks at the top and the bottom of the log and I can uh, drill straight or pretty straight through. You can see I have the mark here that I need to drill on the bottom side of the log and on the top side of the log I made that same mark here. I'll actually drill from the bottom and through the top. I won't drill all the way through it. For one thing my bit's not long enough but I'll try to connect those two in the center with my drill bit and be able to set the, the, the log down over the rod and it'll slide up through the log and I'll be able to anchor it down. I'll put a, a nut or a washer and a nut here and bolt it to the pier. I did the same thing that I've showed you. I'm just sliding one square up against another one and got a mark down on the the edge of the log there and then since these uh, rods are in the center I just came down on the inside of the leg of the square and made my mark and I took an awl and made a little hole there where I can put the the drill bit right in that hole and be centered right where I need to drill all right, I've got my little hole there to start the, the threads on the bit. And I've got another square up here to line up with. And I'm just going to pull the trigger. Get that started in there. And I kind of am sighting down the center of the drill bit. And down the edge of the square there. Now I'm, I'm going to leave that right where it's at. And I'm going to lay my, this other square up there and I can sight right across the top of this bit onto what my square reads and then I can pull that out here to the back and I can pretty much keep this bit running in level this log is still leveled up it hasn't been moved so I'm just going to start drilling I'm going to stop and check it again just make sure I haven't moved something. And I seem to be pretty good. Now on these ship augers, I have found, once I get started in, if I put just a little slight pressure pulling back on it, it seems to help it to drill straighter because these bits will flex. Okay, I'm not going to try to drill all the way through. I'm going to back the bit out. And I'm going to do the same exact thing on the top side of the log as I did on the bottom. Got my point in there. Get it started, sighting down the edge of the of the square, so I know I'm running pretty good. And I lay my square back up there. Get that little bit, little bit more in there. Just look down the square there, see where I need to be. And I can start drilling. Okay, I just felt it hit the other side. I'm just going to ease this in and out to kind of, if there's, if the other side was off just a little bit, these hole with uh, pushing this back and forth all the way through, it kind of helps to straighten the hole out if it's just a little bit off. Okay, I've changed my bit. 
in my drill, I was using a, a three quarter inch uh, ship sauger bit to drill the anchor rods. The anchor rods are actually a half inch, but I wanted just a little bit of slack around that rod just for adjustment when we set the seal logs down over them. And I have changed a bit to, I'm using an inch and a half ship sauger, and I'll do the same thing as far as drilling straight through from one end or one side and then going around to the other side, I can line up with that square that's laying over the log and just get it started in there. And I'm sighting down across that. I've got it still straight. I'm gonna reach over here and I have an old square that I cut off the short leg, it's kind of been banged around and I can lay that right on top. I've got it cut off to where it was set on top of the drill bit and I can just slide this right out and just bring the drill bit up to it and start drilling. Okay I'm stopping and I'll go around to the other side and drill. Got that hole all the way through there. I can put two or three electrical lines through that. I did that on either end. I came in uh, 24 inches or two feet from the shoulder to the center of my electrical hole. All right, the first thing that I'm going to do is rip this bottom flat. Now, what I normally do, I'll make a cut with my chainsaw as long as the bar is down along the side of this line and down about halfway through on the end. I'll do that on either end. And then I'll get up on the log and I'll walk down it with a chainsaw and cut this line. But I'm not gonna show you how I do that because I don't wanna do anything that you might not feel comfortable with. And so what I'm gonna do is just take a, a skill saw, a circular saw, and just cut down along that line. And then when the log is flipped over and this same line is established on the outside, I'll make that same rip with a skill saw. Uh, this saw will only cut two and a half inches and I'll have about an inch or so right there in the middle that I'll have to contend with, but that's where I'll get to use an ax. And then I'll, I'll true the bottom up to where it'll be flat and it'll set on top of the piers. And I also have the option later on if I want to put a, a dry stack foundation underneath it to make it look a little bit prettier. When I start to cut this, I'm just going to put the tip of my bar in along the side of this line here and just get it kind of lined up. I can sight this line with that long bar. That's one of the reasons I like to use a long bar. And I'm going to cut in holding my saw at the angle of this, of this notch. And I'm not going to go all the way to the shoulder line, to the control line. If you can see here, I've got a little mark that I made. Now this is where I'll stop with the tip of the bar. And that leaves me about an eighth of an inch right in here between my chainsaw cut and the actual shoulder where I can make shoulder passes here with a handsaw when I set the other log on that goes over this notch and bring it in to the control line. Since I'm only cutting part of the notch, which is the upper part of a half dovetail and the bottom's flat, when I do the other two logs, I'll get into more detail about that. But for now, I'm just going to take my chainsaw and, and make this cut. And I'm not going to cut all the way through. I'm just going to go down just a little over halfway. And then I'll pull my saw out. Then I'll come around and I'll make this cut. And I'll slightly undercut that, which means that I'll tip that bar just a little bit this way. And make an undercut on this. And it makes it handier or so much easier when you're making handsaw passes through here. And I'll just go down about halfway with it and then I'll pull the tip of the bar out. Now you see I've stayed away from the line just a little bit. When, when this log is flipped over, I'll do the other side after the shoulder lines and everything are established and the notch is laid out. I'll stay away from that line just a little bit. It's been a while since I've cut some of these notches. So for my first few notches, I'll stay away from it. All this will be cleaned up down to the line all the way around. So I'll go to the other end and get the other notch cut then I'll be able to flip the log over because I've done everything that I can do on the inside face. And I'll lay out the bottom rip and the other side of this notch here and cut it. 
All right, the log is flipped over. You can see I planed this with my power planer. I just like to have a smooth surface instead of dealing with this uh, circular saw uh, texture here. I put my square right on the center line. I've already snapped this, you can see, see some white dust. I've already snapped the center line on the outside, just like I did on the inside. And I also snapped the line for the bottom rip on the outside. But for now, I'd show you that I put my, I've got my shoulder mark at eight inches. I can pull my tape from that and I can go to the other end. I can put my tape right on that line and go to the other end and get my mark for the inside shoulder, which will be eight inches back from the end. You always want to lay out, do your layout on the inside and the outside from the same end of the log. Keep pulling your tape off of that same end and you, you should be pretty close with your layout. So I've got my shoulder established here and I'll, I'll do the same thing at the other end, get this shoulder established. Okay, I'm at the other end of the log. I've got my, my shoulder line established here. And I've also got the line for the, uh, the upper part of the half dovetail marked on here. I measured from the center line to the line that I established on the end of the log with the template. And I got that measurement and I transferred that measurement also to right here. And then I just drew a line down through there and it's it'll be just a an angle cut with the chainsaw like I did while ago and I can also while I have the log in this position I can rip this bottom flat with my skill saw and then I'll be able to clean this up and make it flat to set on a foundation Now this thing is ready to flip over and lay everything out from the other side and do the same thing as it just got through doing. At this point, <clears throat> I like to go ahead and put my score marks on the log. If you look at old log buildings and the logs that were hand hewn you'll see these score marks in the logs in a lot of them some of them they it might not be as noticeable it might be kind of weathered out to where you can't see them but on the inside face you would definitely be able to still see at least some of them and i like to do that because what i'm going to do is hew with a broad axe these saw marks off of this log and it will give it that hand hewn and actually will be hand hewn uh, texture and look that you'll see on the outside of the building when you walk up to it so I don't try to do any pattern in with doing this I just uh, I, I like to keep it kind of random and I'm not trying to dig too deep I don't try to make it look like a, a pattern, like you can do a pattern if you want to, like this. But it, it looks too uniform for my taste. So I just like to just, just come along there. What it would look like from some old timers hewing and scoring the, the log before they actually took a broad axe to it. So now I've got this done. Since it was in this position, it was just the best time to do it. I'll turn this log up and I'll clean, I'll, I'll take this bottom off. I've got about an inch to deal with in the center, probably have to do some chopping with an axe, but I've got it all ripped just like I did on the inside and I'll get this bottom flattened down and then I'll turn the log up and clean the notch on either end. I'm just scoring this back here and I can take my axe and come back here and just kind of pop it loose. Right like that. And I have where I ran the skill saw down on the inside or the outside and the inside over here. I just have just a little bit of wood here to contend with. And I can just take my axe and kind of clean that up a little bit.
and I'll I'll probably come back with a slick and a hand plane and, and do a little work to the bottom of this especially where the the piers set where it sets on top of the piers I want that to be real perfectly true as much as I can get it from the line on the outside and the line on the inside I can lay a square up there and make sure that it's completely flat across this surface okay I've just got about a little over well not quite two feet left to go here and I'll have all the bulk of this knocked off and I'll come back and clean all this up I'm just using my two inch chisel and there's going to be a little bit of a, a bump right there in the middle where that center piece of wood was still holding and I can just take my my chisel and just kind of work my way across there like that and and even that back down since this area right here is where it's going to sit on top of a pier I want to make sure that I've got got it flat across there from this point to this point over here so I'm just taking my hand plane and I'm just planing down the high places and then I'll come back and check it with my square or just a little square just I'm using it as a straight edge just a little bit of a hump right there in the middle just planing that out get pretty close with it Got a little bit of a bump right in here There's one more thing that I'm going to do before I turn this over so that I can work the notch out I'm going to paint the bottom of this with the anchor seal the same stuff that I used in the joist pockets I'm just going to give this a coat of this uh, kind of give that just a little bit of protection on the bottom because right in this area where I'm at is where to set on the piers although this won't be touching the concrete itself I just want to go ahead and give it just a little bit of a coating on the bottom so it can't wick moisture off of anything now what I'll do on the piers themselves I'll I'll cut a block of treated lumber and put on there then this seal log will actually be sitting on top of that and uh, I'll put a piece of metal on top of the block the treated block itself 